Henry for five minutes for an opening statement. Well, welcome, uh, Secretary Mnuchin. Welcome back to the committee. You come before this committee at a really precarious time for global markets. In fact, I wrote you in January, uh, right after the vote in the UK Parliament regarding Brexit. In that letter, I raised questions about the uncertainty of a prolonged Brexit and that effect it would have on financial institutions, derivatives market, uh, the derivatives market, cross-border trading in financial services and insurance contracts. Um, and after three failed attempts, the Prime Minister of, of Great Britain uh, continues to work towards Friday, uh, Friday's deadline on Brexit. In Europe, the long and uncertain path towards Brexit is coupled with a possible slowdown in Germany. I'm particularly concerned about the overexposure of German banks and what this means for U.S. financial institutions. This is a serious thing for, for systemic risk. For example, last month, Forbes opined on the Deutsche Bank and Commerce Bank merger, indicating that both banks were in such deep trouble that even the merger couldn't help either one of them. That's problematic. The global issues aren't just limited to the U.K. and Europe. In China, the era of double-digit growth is seemingly at an end. Uh, and thanks to the state-run allocation of capital, a disregard for the rule of law, and a regime that favors the theft of intellectual property over homegrown ideas, uh, we see uh, uh, that coming home to roost. Moreover, should we be concerned? Um, this is a, actually a pretty interesting question, I think worthy of uh, discussion here at Financial Services. Uh, should we be concerned uh, that China has joined the Bloomberg Barclays Global Aggregate Index, opening up their $13 trillion debt market to investors? The move is expected to bring in more than $180 billion in investor capital to China. What does this move mean for global markets? What effect does it have? Notwithstanding these risks, traditional threats to global stability remain, whether they emerge from international terrorism, weapons, proliferation, or illicit finance flows. Treasury plays a critical role by administering sanctions and protecting the U.S. financial system. Uh, areas of bipartisanship uh, on Capitol Hill, um, and, uh, and we view the Treasury as important to this. Uh, that's why we're giving you this authority. Uh, and we think it should be used uh, responsibly but forcefully with clear objectives of national interest. Finally, I want to make a special note of the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, or CFIUS, which is quickly becoming a model for other countries looking to screen investments for national security risks. Treasury resp responsibility um, under this law has a significant impact on the global investment environment. Through bipartisan work here on Capitol Hill, we made significant changes to CFIUS in a way that targeted legitimate national security threats while preserving and even championing the United States' open investment climate. In fact, just last week, CFIUS unwound two deals involving Chinese investors. I look forward to working with the chairwoman to ensure that that piece of legislation is uh, faithfully implemented and regulations conform with congressional intent. And, and with that, I'd like to yield the balance of my time to uh, 